Hi everyone and welcome to the Halloween edition. Yes, it's Halloween D. And, it, it, uh, oh, it is. Oh, well, look at that. Uh, I and got a, and a big boo to you too. Yeah, boo. I wore my costume. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, Woo! you know, give me a minute. I'll run over and get the purple hair. I'm sure I don't you, know. I'm sure you'd look real good in purple hair. Oh, I thought it was for you. Hell no, I got hair. I know. <laughs> well, anyways, it's another fine Monday in yeah. Toronto here, and uh, it's a Halloween day, and on my way over to the studio, I was watching all the people wandering around Eaton Center with their costumes on. One guy just walked across Dundas Street here, dressed as Braveheart. Woohoo, he looked good too. Really? Oh yeah. That's you know, blue face, half the blue face and the kilt. Uh, half the blue face. Oh, half a blue face. I thought it was from a Star Trek episode. Remember? No, no, no. They were all blue and they had a seam down the front. No, 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 no. Those, you're talking about the Andorians. No. Only in the second generation did they have uh, the seam down the front. Okay. I'm talking about the half white, half black guys. Okay, I'm going to get Papadakis back <laughs> on the show and he's going to rip you a new one. I would like to do that. Yeah, that would be fun. I'm sure you mm -hmm. would. We'll do a Star Trek show one of these days. Oh, is he a Star Trek? Uh... Oh, uniform and all. Get out. Oh, yeah, uniform, buttons, the whole nine. What, what character does he like to portray? The Admiral of the Fleet. The, which one? The only one. He likes to be. Because Kirk was Admiral for a while in the movies. Oh, right? well, yeah, Robert? I know, I know, but, you know, he'd be the head of the Federation. He'd be like total Starfleet, Starfleet command. What well, color whole. is his, uh, you know, uniform? Because you can tell by the color what department they're in. Well, his uniform is red. It's the old one. So he'd be like, like, because uh, I think Scotty had a red uniform, right? Kirk had a gold one. Scotty had a red one. No, and, Kirk uh, had a Kirk had a red one. No, the, the lower people had the gold. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah. Not in the original oh. series. I'll bet you anything, Dee. Anything. I'm going to call for an edit. Yeah, call. Just, call or for just an watch edit. an episode, you know, with a color TV. All right. Well, now listen. You know, we're talking about stuff that gets broadcast here. Uh-huh. And you know that our show today is all about smart meters, which is another form of broadcasting, which is being foisted on us across the country, across the United States, across the world. And it's not good stuff. It's not good for people. It's not good for animals. It's not good for bees. It's not good for plants. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for anything. Well, uh, and so with us today mm -hmm. by Skype yes. is Una St. Clair, who is the executive director of Citizens for Safe Technology out in BC. And she has some awesome information to share. Is she in Salmon Arm? Is she? No, she's not in Salmon Arm. Okay. But she, but I, I promised the girls who are in Salmon Arm, my, some supporters out in, in uh -huh. Salmon Arm, that we would absolutely mention Salmon Arm during the show. That's why I mentioned Because, because yeah. um, they took a meter uh -huh. and they found out that the, the electromagnetic frequencies coming off the cell towers in Salmon Arm are just off the scale. They are off the scale. So we'll be talking about that in a minute. But first of all, I want to make a little bit of an announcement. Okay. Little old D is yeah. now the executive director, all by her lonesome, of the National Health Federation Canada, which organization is now being reformed and put back on the road in the way it should have been in the first place. And we're going to be having a good time doing that. Okay. And that's going to be coming up in the very near future. So everybody watch out because NHF Canada is coming down the pike real quick. That's going to be something that's interesting. In the meantime, for the first time, the NHF Canada and the NHF around North America, we have a, a, a completely identical issue, that being the smart meters that we're going to talk about today and the use of RFID, uh, radio frequency, all that kind of stuff. All of that all ties in with our health. And it's very bad news for anybody who is exposed, including animals, plants. I mean, the flora, the fauna, everything suffers from the EMF that's out there. And this is whether it's leakage from power wires or whether it is 
um, deliberately broadcast stuff out of smart meters. So we're going to be taking a look at a whole lot of stuff today that's of very great interest to every Canadian. Everyone who has children needs to know about this stuff. Everyone who has kids in school needs to know about this stuff. And everybody who is expecting to have children or has any fear of cancer needs to know about this stuff. This is a killing grid, there's no question about it. So we've got some real interesting information coming up. Um, you know, I, I suppose we ought to like go to break and then come back in a couple of That's minutes and, sure. and, and bring Yuna in and let her explain to you all exactly what's going on here. It is not pretty. Okay. It's not pretty. So we'll be back in a minute and we'll let you know what's going on in the airy fairy world of broadcasting nasty stuff through the air right at you. We'll be right back. Between depleted diets and day-to-day -day stress, today's high-tech, high-speed lifestyle wears us down. So we need to make sure our bodies have the right fuel to keep going and stay healthy. And that means we need the right balance of calcium and magnesium to keep our bones strong, guard against osteoporosis, and to keep our muscles working smoothly. LifeChoice Optical Mag Complex gives you a veritable feast of nutrients in one capsule. Vitamins B6 and D, plus potassium, boron, and MSM, on top of two forms of calcium and three of magnesium. This all-natural formula gives your bones a boost and helps your muscles carry you through the day. Check out Optical Mag Complex and all the terrific new Life Choice formulations to help you achieve your optimum health. It's your life and it's your choice. So make it Life Choice. Did you know that your thyroid gland is the master and commander of many body functions and is a pivotal factor in the maintenance of your overall health? Whether it's overactive or running on idle, an off-kilter thyroid can cause a long list of ailments, including fatigue, fuzzy thinking, depression, and anxiety. It can slow your reflexes and speed up your heart, raise your blood pressure, and cause you to gain or lose weight. With all that at stake, it makes good sense to take good care of your thyroid with thyroid support, a fast-acting, easy-to-take homeopathic formula from Life Choice. Life Choice Thyroid Support. It's nature's goodness wrapped with care. We all know that vitamin B6 is really important to us, right, Hugh? And the best form of vitamin B6 to take is pyroxidol 5-phosphate, or P5P, because it's in the form that goes right to work. That's right, D. Now, Life Choice brings you P5P Complex plus a blend of trace minerals to help you fight carpal tunnel syndrome, neuritis, fatigue, depression, decreased immune function, and more. And P5P is the only form of B6 that can be given safely to infants, so you know it's the perfect solution for you and your family. It's sort of like honey. The bees digest it for us, so it's the safest sweetener there is. You could say it's a honey of a bee. It sure is. <laughs> and with life choice, you always know it's nature's best wrapped with care. Absolutely. And we're back. And with us now via Skype from BC is the lovely Una St. Clair, uh, Executive Director of Citizens for Safe Technology. Una, welcome. Hello. Hello, I'm glad to be here in Ottawa. Wait, you're in Ottawa? You're in Ottawa? That's right, I am just beaming into your studio. Awesome. But That's uh, why you have a fire, because it's like probably sub-zero there, right? Uh, well, it's to it's to fire me up. Okay. Oh, come on! You don't need firing up. I heard you yesterday. You'll just go on like the Energizer Bunny about this stuff because you know so much, and you're going to tell us all about it right now, aren't you? Well, it's a true Halloween horror story. It that's sure for is. Sure. It sure mm -hmm. is. We have to agree. Now, you know, I've been looking at some of the information that you have sent to me over the last little while. And I have to say that it is, it is absolutely mind-boggling exactly how much uh, of, of, the, of an effect this is having on all of us, our entire environment, our entire uh, way of life is being threatened 
by things that people are foisting on us. And from the looks of it, I, I would have to say, Yuna, it looks like all they're after is a bunch of money. A bunch of money. That's right. Uh, the biggest money to be made here is in the smart meters that are being sold. And then after that, you're going to be forced to uh, change all your appliances into RFID or RF uh, frequency appliances. Your cooling and heating systems need to be retrofitted with radio frequency. Uh, so it's really a big money grab. And there are insiders in government and insiders controlling the whole plan. And they are making a killing on having to have a smart meter on every house and all the appliances that will have to be uh, changed out. Yeah, and, and I noticed a few years ago when I was doing some research that there was uh, some provisions coming along that stated that if your house was not up to code, you couldn't sell it. So it's getting real interesting that, you know, it, it's, it's like so close to the point now where anything we do is going to be subject to revision and supervision and control by someone other than us. We are no longer going to have control over how we live. And, and I know that you're not kidding about the, uh, about the uh, appliances and everything else because the whole function, from what I can tell, on the smart meters is essentially to have a spy sitting in your electrical system telling the government what you're going to be doing. And, and that well, there's, there's, uh, there's no question that a, a clear picture of activities in the house is gained from the information coming from the smart meter. Every single appliance has a unique signature, whether it's the television, whether you're watching a video or a DVD, whether you're using a hairdryer or your, or your cooktop. And when you go to bed, whether you're on vacation, your whole patterns are laid out bare. This is the kind of information that normally is not available without a police search warrant. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, the electrical system. If you have an older home and the smart meter is not compatible with your wiring, so the wiring is a bit old, uh, we have seen cases here in British Columbia, in Richmond, where the people are left without power for a week or two weeks. They have to rewire their whole house at their expense when prior to that the analog meter was working just fine. But the biggest thing is that we are getting taken over within our own home because of course the um, man-made uh, radio frequency and the microwave uh, range of the electromagnetic spectrum is now designated a possible human cancer agent and this is being forced on every home every mom, every child, every dad, every garden, every neighborhood, every bee, every living thing. And that's where we've lost control of our home and our right to live with the risks that we choose. And we need to get that back. Yeah, and that, and that brings me to another point, uh, which is that we have become aware, those of us who are interested in living healthy, uh, we have been, become aware of something called Safety Rule 6, which is uh, a code, a safety code that was um, accepted by the Canadian government through Health Canada. And in that Safety Code 6 are certain sets of standards and regulations with respect to the exposure of human beings to ARFID and electromagnetic frequencies. And Health Canada, correct me if I'm wrong, but Health Canada seems to be violating its own standards. Can this be true, Yuna? <laughs> well, Health Canada has no uh, real push to protect the public. They, their clients are the industry. The industry pays them. The industry lobbies Health Canada. So really, they're not working for the people, and the people are at risk. Safety Code 6 uh, is no safety code whatsoever. It's obsolete. It's out of date. It will protect workers from burns and cooking of uh, human beings, but it will not protect them from the adverse effects, the harmful effects below the level of cooking 
or heating. Now, Safety Code 6 uh, looks at a 6 foot to 200 pound male adult. It measures the heating in the tissue over a six minute period. And that's what it looks at as being the, the safety measure. And of course, there's many more people in the world than six foot two, 200 pound male adults. And so uh, given that there's so many children being exposed and there's no accommodation for the non-thermal biological effects that are going on, they just want to pretend that nobody is getting sick. They want to pretend that this is safe and it's the biggest make-believe story. It is truly the emperor has no clothes on, and we're having a look at that emperor, and we're shouting, you know, he's got no clothes on. And, yeah, and he Canada's, looks funny. <laughs> and he looks funny, and Health Canada is saying, uh, no, he's dressed beautifully. The cell towers are safe. Cell phones are safe. All levels of uh, microwave radiation is safe. Health Canada... Um, some of the scientists that work with them, Center for Disease Control, I talked with one of their scientists, and I asked him, I said, are you, are you denying that there's biological effects that are happening below safety code six? And he said, oh no, we know there are biological effects, but they just jiggle the cells. They just make your cells jiggle at a billion times a second or whatever, and, uh, but that doesn't necessarily harm you. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching or having a look at the research in the Royal Society report, which is the basis that Health Canada has built Safety Code 6 upon. And they say things in there like, well, we know there's effects uh, that cause disruption of sleep. There's effects on the blood-brain barrier. It looks like there's effects on, on the cells that builds up an aggressive tumor-promoting enzyme in the cells. And uh, we know these effects are happening, but are they really harmful? Uh, we don't really know that they're harmful, so we're going to watch the population. We're going to expose everybody. We're going to watch them for 20 to 30 years, and then we'll find out how this experiment turns out. And that's where you got to put the, your foot down. You've got to draw a line in the sand and say, not my kids, not my body, not my life. Go experiment on, on yourself uh, yeah. as Health Canada. You know, I'm opting out of this experiment, and we're looking around Europe, and already they're getting stricter on all exposures from many places, India to Russia to Europe and Canada. Uh, our government has stated they're going to be the leaders in wireless technology in Canada, and this puts every single human being, all our uh, wildlife, all our life forms at risk. We're political pawns because this is all about greed and money and control without considering that we're biological. Everything is biological and we're affected. Yeah, and everything is frequential too. And doesn't this uh, technology and the smart meters particularly, it hits the human frequency of 7.5 hertz? Does it not? Well, uh, there's definitely an issue with the heart, uh, the resonance of the heart and how the heart uh, is affected uh, with the electromagnetic pulses. The big deal about smart meters is they uh, produce the signal in milliseconds. It's a two millisecond signal. So if you look at, they say, well, you've got a minute to four minutes of signaling per day, so that's very little. But if you understand, there's 60,000 uh, milliseconds in a minute and so you've got thousands of signals and these signals are very high spikes they're pulses and it's like being stabbed with a thousand needles over and over again throughout the day and the night uh, we're hearing from people around the country around the world but specifically even in British Columbia where the smart meter program is not fully operational but as soon as those smart meters go on a certain percentage of the population uh, is, it becomes instantly affected. They are dizzy, they have headaches, they're nauseated, skin rashes, they can't sleep. And these are all uh, very well recognized symptoms of microwave radiation sickness. Uh, and absolutely, the frequency is very detrimental to humanity. Yeah, and of course, one of the problems that we have here is that people, you know, they get up in the day and they have a headache. And they don't think anything of it. They, they think, oh, I've got a headache. Must be the weather. There's a change in the weather. Or they get a rash. 
they don't associate the possibility of any kind of vibratory or frequential influence causing actual physical symptoms. And even when they go to their doctors, their doctors are so sadly misinformed and uninformed that they don't know what they're recognizing. And they'll say, literally, take an aspirin and call me in the morning if it persists. And, and well, at, yeah, at this point in history, it is the, uh, the people need to educate the doctors because there's too much of a hold. There's a closing down on the information. So it's time to rip the lid off this and for people to stand up and go to their doctors and say, look, I've suffered from insomnia for the last two or three years. It's not stress. It's not my hormones. Uh, I've had a cordless phone beside my bed. I've had Wi-Fi in my house. I've been sleeping next to a smart meter. I take, get rid of these things or cover them with radiation protecting cloth and I'm fine. So uh, my heart palpitations, my insomnia, my dizziness, my skin rash, I think what people have to understand is if you're dealing with a chronic problem, so it's consistent, you're, you get vertigo, you get tinnitus, the microwave hearing, you get uh, kids complaining consistently of headaches, consistently they're not sleeping well, they're feeling nauseated, they're feeling dizzy, their heart is jumping. This is very serious. We um, have a cardiologist that uh, uh, spends quite a bit of time looking at this, Dr. Sinatra. He's a board-certified cardiologist in the United States. And he's very concerned about uh, people with undiagnosed heart problems being specifically at risk because they're seeing more hearts that basically just stop. Mm -hmm. And um, this, is, this is a phenomena that's growing as we're becoming exposed to these frequencies that disrupt heart normal heart uh, patterns mm -hmm. and you know um interesting that you should say that because my daughter lives in france and she actually is a is a lawyer for a major bank over there and of course she's around wireless technology all the time and do you know for the first time this year she was reporting uh an arrhythmia and and a fast heartbeat she went to a cardiologist she was not diagnosed with anything. There was nothing there to find. And now, after I've been reading the information I've been reading lately, I'm going, you know what? I need to talk to my daughter because she is going to be having a problem. And this brings up the point where I say moms unite. We need mothers, the caregivers, the people that really, and I'm, you know, I'm not, not trying to uh, minimize your your male co-host, but uh, mothers really need to step up to the plate and fight this one because all of our children are at risk and the heart issues. I myself have uh, actually gone to hospital with heart attack symptoms. I was in my uh, 40s. I didn't know that the Wi-Fi router was on in my office. It had been turned on remotely by TELUS and I became so ill over a nine to 10 week period, I was disabled. One of the major problems was uh, heart palpitations and heart arrhythmia and a racing heart. And they could find nothing wrong with me. I, I since correlated these uh, heart problems with any exposure uh, to the cellular technology. Yeah, I would use my cell phone in the car and my heart would do a dance. I'd stand next to somebody who was on the cell phone, my heart would do a dance. Going into stores with Wi-Fi or cordless phones, I would notice my heart would change rhythm. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that really came home to me and I have no heart problems at all in a house that's completely free of all wireless devices. But if I'm around this stuff, my heart does uh, all kinds of skips and jumps and rushing and racing. And if, if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't know. And I would love to see the stats on people and kids, so many kids reporting heart problems. They're keeping their cell phones in their pockets uh, above their heart in some uh, cases. Uh, but this is, this is just a horror story unfolding it for is, people. It is indeed a horror story, Una, and it's most appropriate on Halloween that we tell a horror story. Now we're gonna take a brief break and we will be back after these words from our sponsor, Life Choice. Health conscious Canadians know that nowadays staying healthy means supplementing your diet. And we all know that, right? Absolutely. The best way to do that is with natural products from Life Choice, where we shop the world to bring you the finest ingredients, specially blended to give you the best results in building and maintaining your optimum health. 
Life Choice products are precision formulated by a naturopathic doctor and a team of specialists who take pride in bringing you the quality, value, and health you deserve. All Life Choice products are Health Canada approved, so you can buy them with confidence. Yes, there really is a difference with Life Choice. You can prove it to yourself. Ask for Life Choice products at your local health food store. Life Choice with 25 years of experience wrapping nature's goodness with care. We all know that vitamin B6 is really important to us, right Hugh? And the best form of vitamin B6 to take is pyroxidol 5-phosphate, or P5P, because it's in the form that goes right to work. That's right, Dee. Now, Life Choice brings you P5P complex, plus a blend of trace minerals to help you fight carpal tunnel syndrome, neuritis, fatigue, depression, decreased immune function, and more. And P5P is the only form of B6 that can be given safely to infants, so you know it's the perfect solution for you and your family. It's sort of like honey. The bees digest it for us, so it's the safest sweetener there is. You could say it's a honey of a bee. It sure is. <laughs> and with Life Choice, you always know it's nature's best wrapped with care. Absolutely. Did you know that your thyroid gland is the master and commander of many body functions and is a pivotal factor in the maintenance of your overall health? Whether it's overactive or running on idle, an off-kilter thyroid can cause a long list of ailments, including fatigue, fuzzy thinking, depression, and anxiety. It can slow your reflexes and speed up your heart, raise your blood pressure, and cause you to gain or lose weight. With all that at stake, it makes good sense to take good care of your thyroid with thyroid support, a fast-acting, easy-to-take homeopathic formula from Life Choice. Life Choice Thyroid Support. It's nature's goodness wrapped with care. And we're back. Una, uh, or Huna, I'm sorry. Huna. Uh, Huna. 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 Hugh. Huna. Huna. Hugh. Hugh. Huna. Oh, here we Una. go. It's Halloween. Sorry, Huna. Huna. He's going to do this. I'm wearing my costumes. He's, <laughs> he's going to do this. I'll get him the wig in a minute. It'll settle him down. It, that probably would settle me down. Yeah, it probably would. Probably would. But he, you're sitting next to the window with all that Wi-Fi out there. Hey, can I ask Huna a question? Speaking of which, yeah, Huna, you, are you, you there? Yeah. Okay. Hey, so I want to ask you a question because, you know, we're talking about all this uh, EMF radiation or whatever from these smart meters. But, I mean, we live in a world where I think uh, we see more and more, or over the last couple of decades, we've seen more and more EMF or microwave radiation, wireless radiation, all kinds of stuff. Every, everything from uh, not just the uh, cell phones, but the, the cordless phones we had before that microwaves, television, wireless internet, all kinds of stuff. Is this all part of the larger problem or are these smart meters in particular a special case? Well, well, first of all, you're kind of mixing apples with oranges. I, I just have to separate out what we're talking about with smart meters and the wireless technology is basically in the microwave range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So that's called microwave radio frequency electromagnetic radiation, kind of a mouthful, but it's not in the same category as TVs or radios because those are not uh, transmitters, they're receivers. And the antennas for those things are usually way up on a hill. What we're talking about is um, more and more layers in the microwave range of the radio frequency electromagnetic spectrum and uh, it's layering everything on top of each other. We know that whether you feel it or not, there are changes, there are biological effects to the cells. So some people have explained this and I, I kind of like this. It, they said it's like a nuclear bomb going off in slow motion. So what they're meaning by that is when you get a lot of x-rays, you have damage to your cells and you don't feel that. Uh, but there's a certain time period over which the cell is damaged. In this area of the spectrum, which is in the non-ionizing uh, range, uh, uh, nuclear is an ionizing. So in the non-ionizing range of the spectrum, the damage to the cells uh, happens over a longer period of time. It happens slower, but the effects are still very detrimental and damaging. Uh, I know scientists that call this the rapid aging syndrome <coughs> because the cells are damaged into um, 
into rapid aging. So you see higher rates of diseases that we would normally only see in the elderly. So younger people getting Alzheimer's, younger people getting arthritis and uh, immune system disorders, that type of thing. So uh, it's- Not to mention premature wrinkling. Absolutely, I just can't stand those wrinkles. <laughs> so, uh, so is it any different? You're saying, is it different? Um, it's not different in that it's all in the same uh, spectrum, but what's happening is we're, we've gone from walking through puddles, okay? So if you imagine how much we've got on us, we've been walking through puddles and we haven't been drowning. You know, you don't drown in a puddle. Uh, with the cell towers that are kept away from people, people using their cell phones, uh, limited basis, let's just say be, you know, the late 90s, yeah. the mid 90s. Now there's been an explosion and we've got this technology, this wireless exposure absolutely everywhere. You can't escape it. So now some people are drowning. They can't swim through this. It's too much for their immune systems. Uh, children especially are at huge risk. Their skulls are thinner their bodies are immature, their cells are changing more rapidly, so more prone to damage. Uh, they have a longer life expectancy, so the damage done at the younger age has huge impacts long-term. Um, it, it's just absolutely scary. If you look at the Interphone study, which was the largest study done on people using cell phones, and it was uh, people using cell phones prior to the year 2000, by the way, and that's very important, because I'll tell you why, but they found they termed a heavy user as somebody over 10 years using a cell phone for 27 minutes per day. So I don't know about you, but I don't think that's a heavy user by today's standards, 27 minutes per day. So those people- That's those one phone users, call. That, it, yeah, yeah, that can be one right. phone uh, call. Yeah, so those people were found uh, to have a 40% increase in glioma, the extremely malignant, uncurable form of brain tumor. Now, uh, in the year 2000, we went from continuous wave technology to digital technology. And it's very important to understand what, what the difference is. Continuous wave is harmful to human health, but it's certainly uh, a different animal. It's not quite as dangerous as all the scientists are telling me uh, that I speak with. It's not as dangerous as the new technology that came in, the digital technology, which is pulse modulated. So it's a pulse signal. And it's that pulsing and spiking, uh, that variable forms that go through the human body, the cells uh, register that as a threat, and it disrupts all the normal cell functioning in that the cell membrane closes down, the cell can't communicate properly, it holds on to toxins, it releases, it throws off calcium, um, and, and uh, it just totally disrupts the cellular communication, it causes a big stress on the body. So that has not been studied. In Canada, there are no records being kept of brain tumors that are cell site specific. So brain tumors that are specific to uh, cell phones, cell phone use. There's no questions about that. There's no data being kept. There's no studies being done on malignant, uh, sorry, or benign or uncertain tumors. No uh, compilation of data to look at the ear, uh, auditory nerve tumors, uh, salivary gland tumors, that type of thing. So we're not getting the data. We are not getting the data. And so they start to throw smart meters on everybody. And you got to get this picture because this is where the horror story comes. Every single house with a radiating microwave uh, device on the side, it's pulse modulated. It's sending these high spikes uh, of power, radio frequency, and uh, it's like death by a thousand cuts. Uh, people are, are, are literally being assaulted by these um, spikes every few seconds and we're measuring that's measuring an interesting word seconds. you mentioned the word assault they're being assaulted and and you know that's what i basically look at it as is that this is an assault on all of us and it's, because yeah, of the fact it's, yeah. i'm sorry because of the fact that there is harm attached and physical harm to innocent people without their consent, without their knowledge, without their their personal involvement in any way. You're it's talking biggest, about negligence. Yeah. This is criminal negligence on the on behalf of Health Canada. Don't you think? I think it is anyway. 
I mean, somebody I could think, correct I me, think but that you can't let the I, you can't let the government off the hook here. Uh, the government is uh, so far uh, involved with the industry. You don't know where industry ends and ends and government begins. So it's it's a really it's a political problem. It's Health Canada is not doing their job. They're working for the industry. Uh, it, it's it's really a shocking situation. And when you talk about assault, uh, it's assaulting uh, our children's future. The it's assaulting what uh, resources we have in our environment. Whether it's bees that are being disrupted uh, via these signals. Um, I just was talking to my husband and I said, do you remember there were uh, so many uh, bats and frogs around uh, six years ago and now we don't hear them at all. We don't have them at all. What's going on? And that's yeah. a really interesting question. We can all look at our natural surroundings and there are massive changes happening very, very quickly. So if you look at uh, colony collapse disorder and if you look at changes in fauna and flora, and you start to look at the proliferation of cell towers and then add to that picture autistic kids and how that has ramped up. What has changed in the environment so quickly, so fast, that's causing these massive changes in all life forms? Well, you know, are we vaccinating them a ton more? Are we, uh, are we using more and more chemicals? Not so much. What's happened? It's the cell towers that have gone up. It's every home being told get a cordless phone, get all these things, uh, and it's definitely damaging people's immune systems. Yes, well, it's just the inconvenience of convenience, isn't that, Yuna? Because essentially what we're doing is we're conveniencing ourselves into an early grave, a lot of us, and, and we are allowing ourselves and our children to be used in a, I think it's a monstrous experiment. I think it's awful. It was never needed is never, I mean, the analog system has always worked. They've, I don't think any hydro company anywhere in the world has ever complained that they didn't get the bill paid because it was an analog meter. You know, so where did all this come from? Well, it's just another, you know, build a better mouse trap kind of thing where somebody comes up with this idea and they say, well, we can do all the surveillance and we can we can get all this information on people. They won't even know we're doing it. And in the, in the course of doing that, they're killing us slowly. Well, you have, to, you have to look at what the big picture is. The big picture is a worldwide grid where everybody will have an ID. So there's an RFID, uh, whether you're carrying it in chips on your, uh, in your wallet or it's on your body or in, under your skin. Everybody is marked. Everything you buy, your uh, smart meter can read it. Your fridge reads it. It's, it sends the information to the smart meter. Uh, anything you bring in the house, all movements, everything is monitored. Everything is uh, analyzed. And then the marketing uh, value of that is massive. The smart meter will probably be able to be uh, upgraded in ways that we can't even imagine yet. We just can't even imagine. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a mesh. It's like we've all had a radiation uh, fishing net thrown over us. And we're just beginning to see the tip of the iceberg on the different computer technologies they're going to put into this thing. I got to give you a couple of things. Um, this is not a meter. We should never call it a meter. It's a computer spy murder machine. Uh, it's a surveillance device. It's it's something that's invading everything that we would hold precious: our security, our health, our privacy, our children, our future. And so you can't call this a meter. Okay, um, wait. Uh, yeah, you know, because that's a very strong statement that you're making there that it's a spy device. <clears throat> now it, it almost seems there's two issues here. One is the fact that it's a uh, that it's uh, putting out some uh, microwave radiation that's harmful, that's a health problem. But the, the idea that it can be used as a spy device uh, to, to spy on us and essentially undermine our freedom, that's a, that's, a whole, that's a separate issue. And it seems like an important issue, but it almost seems like that's a very large claim. And but it's not, you. They who's admit it. Who's spying on us? They admit it. Well, who's they? The governments have admitted when it comes to the smart meters, they 
are talking already about time of use. They're talking already about, and they're, they're open about it. But time of use, when you think about it, because that's one of the issues when it comes to, you know, when you're trying to manage a power grid is, you know, you've got peak power use at some times and you've got less use at other times. The problem is you need to have the capacity that's going to handle the peak use. Uh -huh. So what that that's means what is, they, that's what they well, tell us. I mean, well, isn't it true? The no, thing is, it's the not thing true. Is, you know, that means you know, if you're only, if you're not going to give people an incentive to use power in off-peak times, that means you got to build more nuclear reactors. So, so let, let's talk about the spy issue for a minute. So there's a couple of issues. Anything that's wireless can be hacked into. Let's say somebody decides they want to know what's going on in your house. It's not that big a deal to hack into the wireless signals coming from your smart meter. So uh, whether it's the utility, uh, the utility wants all homes to have activated the home area network. Do you, do you know about the home area network? No. It's, it's a Wi-Fi network that comes into the home from the smart meter. That home area network uh, has the ability to communicate with all the appliances uh, and your heating and cooling systems in the home. Uh, it can also probably have the capability of talking to your uh, household uh, security system, any systems. So that uh, home area network is for remote control of your house. It's to shut off your air conditioner or your heating or uh, the, the homeowner can also access it. Uh, and that's how it's being billed as something that's great for the homeowner to access. But what is actually happening is that uh, they're able to look at, okay, we're going to turn off everybody's fridge in this area for half an hour every five hours. Or we're not going to allow air conditioners to come on until the temperature reaches 86 degrees. So there's different uh, avenues there. Uh, when we're talking also about the wireless and the hacking, uh, Harvard has put out a paper called Who Controls the Off Switch? And uh, to have a wireless grid, according to the former director of the CIA, James Woolsey, it's absolutely a stupid grid because uh, anybody who's um, working on cyber terrorism can access the whole North American electrical grid through one house, one house accessing that and then getting into the system. And that would be a complete economic collapse if you have power that's out for a week. And that's the kind of thing that is a security risk uh, from anywhere. Who, who knows? I'm not going to name a country. It could be any organization, no, you don't have any to. group, I mean, any country. The bottom, the, line, the bottom line here that I'm seeing is, I mean, even if you're talking to lawyers about uh, about criminal cases, they'll tell you flat out that you have absolutely no expectation of privacy on a phone that broadcasts a signal. So they can listen to your cell phone calls without warrants, but they can't listen to your landline without a warrant. So now with their smart meter technology, they can literally hack into everything. And, and they, yeah. they can do it. It doesn't have to be a criminal that's doing it. It can be your own ding blasted no. government. Well, the government in Germany was just found guilty of spying on all its citizens via their uh, computer networks. And uh, there's no question that the technology is there for the Wi-Fi home area network system to also be able to be a surveillance device. They can hear whatever's going on in the house uh, to have that capability. The kinds of capabilities that can be built into these meters is beyond our current imagination. I will tell you that. I've had a look at some of it. Um, you know, a lot of it coming out of the U.S. is called Homeland Security, and that's just really quite terrifying because they're ramping that up. They're spending more on Homeland Security, but it's really about knowing what every single person is doing all the time. So the capability will be there. Uh, it will be activated coming up. Whether you... You should stop it now. That's all I have to say. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the problem. I mean, you guys in BC, uh, BC's been awesome this year. They, they kicked out the HST. They, they took the bull by the horns. They kicked out a premier. Now they've got one in that they don't like much, and I don't give much chance for Christy Clark's chances next time around. People in BC, need, we need to clone you guys. Because well, you know what? 
we're, we're just getting the benefit of other people running a bit ahead of us. Uh, down in California, they've been fighting this. The, there is an initiative petition starting in BC. It's at stopsmartmeters.ca, stopsmartmeters.ca. It's just starting. We're also starting with legal action and a human rights application has been filed. Across Canada and across the world, this is actually a world grid we're talking about. It's a one world grid. And people need to stand shoulder to shoulder, first of all, in each province, then across Canada, then across the world. And we need to say, this is not democracy. This is dictatorship. Uh, when you can't control the risks in your own home, I fear for the children. I fear for them from a health point of view and for their future. If we, the parents, if we, the adults, don't take a stand and say this is unacceptable in our country to uh, to live like this. I'm seeing the instilling of fear as the basis for this program moving forward. And that is quite chilling because when you start to make the population afraid, you know you're not in a democracy anymore. You and sure as, aren't. And as far as the people are concerned, you talk about, you know, how people are, are it's almost like we're saying that people are to blame and they're not. People have no idea the risks of this technology. They have no idea they are guinea pigs. They don't know their children's futures are being stolen <clears throat> from them. They just don't know. And I was in Salmon Arm, this beautiful, beautiful place. And right in the middle of town is a cell tower. And it's low to the people. It's in the very center of where everybody's sitting around and eating coffee and enjoying the day. And here's a cell tower very, very low. The, the readings were high, um, were higher than downtown Vancouver, uh, a big city, because this cell tower is so low and so close to the people. The people don't know. Nobody, who's going around with measuring mm -hmm. equipment? And everybody should buy themselves a little Cornet 8 uh, gigahertz uh, device uh, to, to see what's going on. Hey, uh, Yuna, I just wonder, you know, there's people that uh, say that there are different... Uh strategies, technologies they can use to ameliorate things like the microwave radiation. And I'm thinking of uh, um, those special little buttons you put on your cell phones, or there's uh, people in Toronto here who have gifted the, uh, the, who gift cell towers with little bits of organite. And uh, in fact, I even have a little bit of uh, Egyptian biogeometry on my phone that uh, is supposedly works. But is there, is there things that people can do? Or do we have to really just tell the government to get rid of these things? Una, tell well, them what no. you know, tell yeah. them what you've done. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is great. Oh, um, well, as uh, I've tested, or not tested, but used some of these personally, and the only thing that really works for me personally is number one, claiming my, my rights as a uh, citizen here, which are democratic rights, and knowing that we've got to fight this. It, we can't just protect ourselves and think that. The rest of the world's going to be go to hell in a handbasket, and we're not going to be affected. Bees can't wear little chips or, or, or whatever. What I do personally is I wear clothing. I've made clothing out of radiation protecting fabric, and I've painted the walls in certain um, rooms in my house to to stop the signal. I like to be able to measure that the signal is actually stopped, that I'm not being exposed, and I measure that with equipment. Um, I don't believe that we can think that we've solved the problem by putting a chip in our cell phone. Uh, the problem will come around behind you and hit you in the back of the head if you think that that's going to solve the problem. Yeah, it's it maybe on your cell phone, but it's not on everybody else's. And, and every time you use your cell phone, you're impacting the natural world. What are we going to do, put, put chips on all the birds, you know, if, if you think that technology works? Um, or... How, we can't, we can't do that. We've got children every day in schools being radiated, and now in their homes they're radiated. And then you put the smart meters on, and you've got uh, every single house sending out signals to a collector unit. That collector unit talking to all the meters all the time, and they're putting these collector units on the streets or on houses, and they're not telling people, we're going to make your house a collector unit. And then the units are chattering to themselves back and forwards and then there's a daisy chaining of information this is is a killing grid i i absolutely believe it uh because it may take 20 years but it's going to damage humans irreversibly and i can say that 
uh, without qualm because I've looked at the science. The damage to uh, human sperm is quite uh, quite distinct. After four hours exposure to Wi-Fi from non-thermal exposure, 48% of sperm is uh, damaged and, and actually totally strange. Well, there you uh, go, guys. Now, there's a darn good reason for most men to grow a sack right now and start fighting this. Because as you said earlier, it's, it's an issue for mothers, but it's also an issue for fathers. I mean, meters may be smart, but mothers are smarter. And, and we expect fathers to step up to the plate too. They won't be fathers if they don't step up to the plate. You'll just need, need more men to step up to that plate. Well, now there's I a thought. <laughs> maybe, maybe the plan is to clone people. Uh, at some point in the future. I don't really know what the plan is, but I do know that from uh, some of the scientific documents that female eggs in the fetus, in utero, uh, specifically are affected. So you, you're looking at uh, DNA being affected, yeah. uh, sperm and ovum, and these are all of the very foundations of, of being human, and they're being altered by this technology. So are we willing are we willing to dis to really destroy humanity as it is today with this technology? Uh, I think we have to demand a safer technology everywhere that this can be wired. It should be wired. Every smart meter should be wired through fiber optic or phone lines. Fiber optic or phone lines are the safest way to have the data sent, uh, whether or go back to analog. We have to demand safety before the convenience. And we need to have all the schools hardwired with their computers. This is not about stopping technology. It's about making technology safe so that we do have a really good future to look ahead to. Because right now, there's way too much risk. Okay, Yuna, you talk about all these different things, but are they, you'd think if this stuff, you talk about the dangers that have been uh, scientifically described and proven, but you would think that if these are, um, accepted and proven, as you say, scientifically, that it could form a basis of some sort of a lawsuit or legal action against uh, whoever is putting these things in, whether that's Health Canada or the, the power utilities. Um, why isn't there, that there happening? Are some, well, it is happening. There's a lawsuit in Portland, and that is Wi-Fi in schools. And there's also a lawsuit that was won in Maine uh, the law, the uh, law, law firm was uh, Skelton, Taint, and Abbott, I believe, and they won on the rights of health and privacy that anybody who doesn't want a smart meter should be allowed to opt out. So where people gather together and start legal action so far, uh, the smart meter won in Maine, they have won. Um, so we are following that path here in British Columbia. It takes a bit of time to get all the ducks in yeah. the row, but... We are following that. And I am hoping, as I mentioned to you yesterday, Yuna, I am hoping to bring the National Health Federation's international office in California on board with this. They are already uh, posting articles and information about it. And the National Health Federation Canada is going to be absolutely supporting these efforts because we know for a fact our kids are at risk, we're at risk, our world is at risk. We cannot simply just allow this stuff to happen. There's a whole lot of stuff out there to fight, I know. But we've, we, this stuff, we've got to stop because this is insidious and it's the kind of thing that sneaks up on you and bites you in the back and you just don't know you've been had. You just don't well, know. But you, you know, just really, people need to know, uh, this is not something that that's, uh, that's hard to come up with good solutions for. The, there's. It, we can easily hardwire computers. We can, in most cases, go to safer phones that power down, uh, whether they're cordless phones or cell phones. We need to demand safer uh, equipment. When the public knows and demands safety, then the marketplace will react. At, up to now, the people haven't known. We need to demand that the meters on our houses are wired through fiber optic, or through phone lines or bring back those really really awesome meter readers because they're the eyes and the ears and the nose uh, of our community they can tell what's going on long before a meter can 
So, and I'm talking about grow ups or those kinds of things. So, uh, there's lots of measures that we can take to make things safe and public just has to know the public is always the last to know so now is the time our the time in our history where uh, we need to take a step back and we need to just make safe choices and demand it and we need to educate our politicians too because none of them know but you know what una and i have a question before oh we he go. has a question before yeah, we go una because there's people una sorry there's people it's that okay. have uh, smart meters on and they were installed maybe without their permission or uh, you know they're just finding out about these problems now but guess what they've already got a smart meter what can those people do well what we have on our website is a removal letter if you go into the search button and type in removal letter it's a form of letter that basically says we're uh, letting you know right now you got to get this thing off our house uh, so the first step to do is to send a registered letter get this thing off my house. And then you need to start organizing. Um, the politicians will listen and pay attention to numbers of people. Up till now, there hasn't been enough people that have joined together. So uh, when, when you have enough people join together and all those people send registered letters saying, get this creepy thing off my house, and some people are doing, um, you know, finding ways to stop the radiation. And you can check with different experts in your area. Uh, there's a company in Toronto called Safe Living Technologies. Phone, phone up him. Um, that's Rob Metzinger there. And phone up and say, what can I do to stop the radiation from my meter? So uh, letters, registered letters, talk to your MLA. Send a, uh, send a registered letter with your name, your, your address, your postal code. And every, if you all do that and begin to make a noise, because right now you're too quiet. You're just way too quiet. You're being those nice Canadians. But you got to be fighting for your life, fighting for the future. Time for a polite discourse here. here. No. There, there's no time for that anymore. We're going to all die if we don't stop just talking about it. We have to start uh -oh. yelling about it. We're gonna we're gonna be dying, you yeah. know that's just fine. But uh, and and I get to this, I say, okay, so so we kill all the humans with this, uh, with all the different things that we're doing that are so horrendous. But specifically, the microwave radiation. And uh, but really, do we have the right to disrupt all of nature to kill bees and frogs mm -hmm. and pollinating insects and you know all these things? If we're having problems with microwave hearing effects, so many people with tinnitus, which is a microwave hearing effect, look it up on Wikipedia. Do we have the right to do this to animals, uh, the bats and, and deer and um, rabbits, everything that has acute hearing, dogs? We're getting so many reports of dogs that are just so traumatized when the smart meter goes on. So uh, do we have the right to do that? Okay, we can knock ourselves mm -hmm. off. But do we have the right to destroy the balance of our environmental systems? I don't think so. No. Uh, we, we've stepped over every boundary. Yeah, we have. Uh, we, need to, need, we need to reconnect with nature. We have to, first of all, do no harm to nature. We have to do no harm to, to people and children. And any society, any group of people that does not protect their children <laughs> will not have a future. That's, that's telling them. At. That's telling yeah. them, Una. <laughs> this is exactly, I think, what people have needed for a long time, is to get some information started on this, because as you say, we are too quiet. And unfortunately, it's quiet time again, because we have reached the end of the show, and I wish we had another hour, but yeah. we don't. But let's make sure we give out all the web addresses. Where yes, we will, we will have all the web addresses um, put onto the, uh, onto the archive of the show. So those of you who are wishing to get in touch with Citizens for Safe Technology or any other of the groups who are involved in protecting our families and ourselves and all of nature, our world is at stake. Thank you so much, Una St. Clair from Citizens for Safe Technology for joining us today. Um, I, I would love to get more information on this and pass it on to everybody as soon as we can and we'll make that a priority in the future. Thank you so much again. Thank you. You know, what's your website? Just one, give out one website for the people here. Citizensforsafetechnology.org. Fantastic. Excellent. Thanks again. And we'll see you all again next week.